All right, what's up guys? Part two in the third person games of Unity. This is picking up where we left off last time. I, this next part of the process is sometimes easier, sometimes more difficult than I feel like it needs to be. I started with my students this year by showing them websites like TurboSquid where you can download free, really cool uh, 3D models or pay for some even cooler 3D models to use in your games and projects. Um, I personally think using free models is a great, great, great way to learn. I think it's great practice to figure out how you use your own models or the ones that you've actually paid for and license, but just know the difference between using a free model for practice and then actually using your own for a project. One of my favorite models that I found by uh, by Copia is on uh, Turbo Squid. This Pokeball, I thought it looked really cool. I thought it was like a, a few steps above a basic Pokeball, and it comes in a few formats now. FBX, .fbx is my go-to file type for game projects for 3D models. You can grab the OBJ and STL, especially with 3D printing. Um, what I love about this one is it even comes with a .blender file, but if you're downloading from TurboSquid or otherwise, you need to make sure to download all the files, including the textures, if they've packaged them. So I'll go ahead and I'll download the FBX. And I will show that I had a problem importing some FBXs and their textures weren't coming in Unity as easy as I thought they would. Some were easy, some were really simple. I just drag, dropped, came in fully textured, amazing. So I've got the Pokeball FBX in my downloads. I'm just gonna always create a prefab folder. I'm creating my own prefabs. Maybe I'm saying um, imported prefabs, or I'll just, I'll just call this prefabs prefabs, and I will bring my Pokeball in there, the FBX of the Pokeball. Drag and drop that in there, and I can see that I've already got some issues with it here, where I can open it up and it comes in multiple parts, that's okay, but I can see that it's not coming in textured. If I drag and drop it into my scene, press F to, to zoom in on it, I can see that it is just a blank, uh, no material, no texture Pokeball. I'll go ahead and delete that from my hierarchy. Now, to show this process flawlessly, meaning it'll work for any model, I'm going to jump into Blender. I'm actually going to open up the Blender file of this project that I downloaded too, just to show how you can open any of your own projects in Blender or anything that you've made in Blender and make sure that all the text textures export correctly. Now, so here's a copy's model in Blender. I'm in material view and I can see that it looks gorgeous. If I go into UV editing right here, this top tab, now I can see all of the different images, if I click on this drop down right here, that there are four images that this project came with, a base color, a metallic map, a normal map, and a roughness map. We need to make sure that all of these images make it to Unity. Either we export them or save them separately from Blender, or we find a way to package them into the FBX. So as long as they're all here, what I can do is when I export this FBX, so making sure that's the only thing in my scene, because Blender will also export uh, lights and cameras into Unity, right? So we don't need to bring in Blender's lights and cameras unless you want it for a project. I'm gonna file, export, FBX, and then I'm gonna go ahead and find my project in here, so I'm not just saving things in my downloads. There it was, tutorial game. Um, and then right here where it says patch mode, here, can I zoom in on this? Does that screw up my recording? Right here where it says patch mode, I'm gonna change where it says auto to copy. And then this little box here that says embed textures in FBX binary file, let's check that because it's gonna take those images and pack it into the FBX. Now I can click export, making sure I know where it's going. Let's jump back over to Unity and bring in that FBX tutorial game, Pokeball FBX, drag and drop that in there. And now it looks pretty similar, right? It, it, it looks like it doesn't have textures. What I need to make sure I do is when I have the prefab and assets before I drag it in, go to materials right here. First things first is I'm gonna extract the textures. It's gonna to wanna to find a file. You just wanna find the, the folder that the FBX file is in. So it usually finds it by default, just click choose. And if I did it correctly, you'll see those images that I pointed out in Blender show up here in this folder now. Uh, this one says it needs to be marked as a normal map, let's fix now. And then I can extract materials. Right now it says that it has none for its material, it's not linked, but if I extract the material, if I pull it out of the FBX, again, just choose that same folder. Now there's the Pokeball material right there. And if you extract the textures first and then the material, this Pokeball material comes pre-textured. And hey, look at that prefab now. If I drag and drop that prefab in there, boom, press F to zoom in on it. That's looking a lot better. It's not 
perfect yet. If I click on the prefab, or rather click on the material, the normal map came in, but the metallic map did not. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the metallic map over here. Sorry, that's the roughness. So with the material selected, I'm gonna take this roughness map and drag it onto height map, this little check mark over here on the material. And then the metallic map, which is this guy, I will drag and drop that onto metallic. And that'll just give more detail. Now that looks a little too shiny, maybe you like that. I'm gonna select my material and drop that roughness down. Or drop the smoothness now into the roughness feature and others. And that looks a lot better, boom. One more thing, when you're bringing in uh, models into Unity, they don't come in with their colliders turned on yet. So with the prefab selected, not the object in the hierarchy with the prefab selected right here where it says model i'm going to check generate colliders i'm going to zoom in on that again hopefully the screen capture software works generate colliders then i need to apply that if i already have one in the scene and that's going to create a mesh collider around the box meaning if i hit play i should be able to run into and not run through the pokeball it's a pretty big pokeball for my scene but boom we did it we brought in a model all right i've got a bit more time in this tutorial before i i deem it too much so let's talk about tree if i click on my terrain there's a function in the terrain called paint trees it's a way to take a prefab or any object instance and just scatter it kind of spray paint like brush a bunch of instances of that object all around your scene it works for trees but it also works for other things like rocks and, and grass and other stuff you want all over the place but you need to define trees and i ran into some problems with this that actually had me and my students stumped for a few weeks here. And I had some help from some other YouTubers. Always look for other YouTubers who are working on the same kinds of things. First things first, let's grab a tree. Let's grab something that we wanna use as a tree. Unity's asset store has tons of really cool trees. If you just look for trees, tons of really cool trees that'll, that'll work for you. But I found this really cool one on Turbo Squid, this X-Frog weeping cherry blossom tree. I thought it was gorgeous, so I downloaded that. I'm gonna bring that into my prefab scene. I'll make a new folder for trees, you know, just in case I bring more trees into the scene. Let's download the FBX of that one. It comes in as a .zip, so I just gotta open that up. There it is in its folder, and there's the FBX along with some image maps. So what I can do is if I hold shift, I can click on both of these and bring them into my project together. Again, click on one, hold command or shift or control on a PC, bring in the other, drag and drop it into my trees folder, fix any normal maps that need to be fixed, and boom, there, I got it. If I drag and drop that in, it looks gorgeous. But let's turn it into a tree that I can paint with. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one from my hierarchy. It's right now named Prunus Pendula. I'm gonna go ahead and just right click, rename it Cherry Blossom. So it's something that I immediately recognize and can look for. Always name your files, especially when it comes to video games. You don't wanna be looking for prefab number three, untitled.psd, whatever, like, you just name your stuff. Once again, under the models, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I click generate collider with my prefab selected, just so I can run into the trees and not run through the trees. Now, if I click on my terrain again, with the paint trees button, if I go to edit trees, add tree, I need to find a prefab to use for the tree. So here's all the prefabs in my scene. There it is, there's Cherry Blossom. That's why I named it, so I could recognize what I'm looking for. There's a ton of other ones in here too. So I click on Cherry Blossom, I click Add, and there it is, there's the tree. But if I click, it doesn't look like it's painting yet. It's painting this kind of weird blue instance of something. It didn't work immediately. Sometimes when my students would do it, it wouldn't paint anything. Other times it worked immediately, and that was really cool. We, didn't, we couldn't figure out what was going on. So, Codemaster Jamal is a YouTuber that uh, had found this problem. I'll link his YouTube video below. Here it is on my screen right now. But he had found a solution to this problem after trying to like search for other YouTubers himself on it. So big shout out to Codemaster Jamal. He's got some amazing, amazing tutorials on game design himself. Please check him out. Here's like me taking his solution and using it for, uh, for my classroom and my students. Basically, what you need to do is on the prefab, you need to add a LOD group component. LOD stands for level of detail. And what that means is that you can set what level of detail the game is going to render, the game is going to process based on how close or far the camera is from that object. Basically, if we're painting a lot of trees, trees are 
pretty complicated objects. We don't want the game to render every single tree and scene at once, especially if we're not even close. You'd be able to use simpler models or nothing at all, which is called cold, to render when the camera is a certain distance away and render higher quality versions as the camera gets closer. Unity needs an LOD group on the prefab and it needs to know what it is rendering. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring in one copy of this tree into our scene. And here it is, Cherry Blossom. Now on this copy, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a component and then I'm gonna search for LOD group. Boom. There's my LOD group. Now here it is. I can see what it's gonna render at 100%, 60%, 30%, etc. For now, I'm not gonna use level of details. This is a small scene. This is a simple project with a tutorial. So I'm actually gonna delete everything but uh, one. Right click that, and I'm gonna drag, say, hey, it calls it uh, when it's, calls meaning it pulls it or it doesn't render it, and pulls it when it's uh, 15%, and then I'll just put that wherever it is. And now in the renderers, I need to add a mesh for it to render, right? So if I click on LOD zero right here, I'm gonna drag and drop just the mesh itself and say it renders the full thing at zero. Drag that there, yes, reparent, and now it has a mesh to render at 100%. I'll do the same thing there. Yes, reparent. So now that I've added the LOD group onto this instance, I need to drag that back in as its own prefab again. So what I'll actually do is drag this in here, use it as an original prefab, and let's name it Cherry Blossom Tree, just so it's unique from the first mesh I had. And now what I can do, following according to plan, is when I go back to my edit or to my trees, edit tree, add a new one, find that Cherry Blossom Tree prefab because it's got the LOD group on it. Add that, and if all went according to plan, I can now paint those. Now that's an excessive tree to paint, especially if I'm doing that. I might want to uh, drop the density a lot, increase the brush size a little bit, um, randomize the, the height a little bit more, and boom, now I've got just some decoration to my scene. Hit play, see what that looks like from player perspective. All right, trees are a little too big. Pokeball is a little too big, but we've shown the basics over how to uh, bring in FBXs or bring in textured models from Blender, um, as well as how to decorate trees. Thank you, Codemaster Jamal, for finding that solution. Um, hopefully this video extends uh, that solution to even more people, including my students. Um, in the next video, let's talk avatar. Let's get rid of this standard robot avatar and bring in custom uh, avatars and textures for our own character model. Once again, thanks for watching.